Drivers then out on track for qualifying for the Manufacturer Series for round four of the 2021 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. Currently looking here at Mario Stracker in the Nissan GTR. These Group 4 cars are going to be a fairly big old handful for these drivers, I'm fairly sure. And uh, keen to see what the uh, Slovakian driver is going to be able to do then out on track. Of course, a very, very long warm-up lap for these drivers to get heated to their tyres and brakes. Let's see how he's going to fare. Now, what about Jose Serrano? He's riding on the crest of a wave, let's be honest, after World Series 3 very recently. Porsche, to, of course, taking victory in that race, and uh, Serrano doing a brilliant job out there on track. He'll be, of course, looking forward to trying to build on that positive momentum. Yeah, I think so. It's Sycamore as well in the NSX. Uh, a bit of a handful round here, the mid-engine layout, of course, in that uh, uh, in that Honda. And uh, they've been uh, a manufacturer that have not been where they want to be, I think it's fair to say. But uh, different circuit this. Here's uh, Yuki Araki as well in the Dodge. Had a great time last time out at the uh, Red Bull Ring, uh, getting a third position, looking to maybe go too better here, try and chase a win today. It's amazing to see them, you know, making that ascension to the sharp end of the field because it's the first time we've really seen Dodge fighting at the sharp end end of the grid throughout the last few years in the FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. Somebody who will be looking for forward progress is this man here, Baptiste Beauvoir. The Frenchman, of course, we know is uh, very quick on his day. Now, this Mercedes-Benz in Group 4 trim, I wonder how quick it is going to be. We'll see, of course, once we get those first qualifying times here for Baptiste Beauvoir, but uh, I wonder whether he is going to be able to have what it takes to make that step forwards. So coming down then over the crest of the hill for Baptiste Beauvoir, over to the far left side of the circuit, just clipping the grass on the way through the uh, flag blitz there. Now Takuma Miyazono, of course, Subaru have been doing very well so far in 2021 in the uh, Manufacturers Series. Let's see whether they're going to be able to continue that strong form. Had a bit of an off time last time out in uh, World Series 4 by their standards. Uh, sorry, World Series 3, I should say, last time out by their standards. And uh, let's hope that here for World Series 4 they can uh, make that step forwards once again. It happened to buy at an awful time last time out in the Manufacturer Series. It's got a penalty in qualifying, uh, which put him right towards the back of the grid and uh, put him right in the back of the, from the get-go. But, uh, of course, a whole new chance here. And uh, although, actually, a lot more corners around here to pick up that penalty. So uh, if he's unlucky, you might end up uh, picking one up too. Here's Okimoto in the Scirocco. And compared to some of the other cars out here, their Group 4 VW Scirocco is a bit of a box, really, compared to... <laughs> so, well, uh, Bappi's got an AMG and he's got a Scirocco. That doesn't seem fair, does it? No, it does and front-wheel drive car, that uh, Volkswagen Scirocco there as well. Of course, all these cars uh, on the balance of performance basis have been uh, tested quite extensively by the team as well. Here's a Quintenia Hall, the Belgian driver who has been just emphatic, really. Peugeot getting on the podium at last time out, finishing second in World Series 3. Let's see whether Quinten can uh, do the business once again here in Group 4 trim. Here is Riotta Kokobin then, who had a dog's day of it last time in World Series 3. Yeah, I remember asking, like, what's up with uh, Riotta? Um, in, uh, in both Series Nations and the fact he's had a bad time. But here for Team Mazda, of course, I think that uh, he'll have uh, maybe reset himself, trying to go back to the, the ways of old and uh, maybe put himself back up on the podium. Here's Igor Fraga too, someone who uh, we always expect a lot from Igor, but he's not necessarily delivered recently. And I'm sure, he, I know from his actual personal streams at home that he uh, loves this circuit. So he should do fairly well around here, the Toyota. Only P7 in round three last time out for Igor Fraga. So let's hope that he is going to uh, be able to be uh, fighting at the sharp end of the grid. This man here, Jose Serrano, second on the road, and he'll be the second diet driver to register a time in this session. Now, coming down the Dossinger Hill, not much he can do here, really. Just got to keep the foot to the floor, keep it planted, and just hope for the best as he comes in towards these final few corners of the lap and it's not been a bad lap time here then for Jose Serrano. I've been keeping an eye on the timing screens here Jimmy and he's been uh, consistently faster than the man who's going to be setting up the first representative time in this session of Mario Stracker. Yeah every second has been better for Jose Serrano and Stracker you saw just up the road there here he is now on your screen in the GTR. Not really got to grips it seems of a Nissan around here which is a say, uh, shame for Stracker. You understand slightly there coming into uh, the last complex corners comes down the last right hand to set the first time of the day across the line 
Hamilton, and his lap time is a 7.03. Not too bad, but as Serrano currently is four seconds up on that, so that's going to dip below the sevens. Over the timing line comes Serrano, then he's going to go significantly faster. The first driver, as Jimmy said, under the seven-minute barrier, so that's uh, 6.58.418 for him. Here is Shohei Sugimori, then the Japanese driver behind the wheel of the Japanese mark, coming through into the final series of corners. A couple of seconds down, but this should sit him uh, second quickest of the times that have been set so far through the final corner. Across the timing line comes Sugimori, and indeed he does go second quickest here so far, some 2.1 seconds off the pace. But look at Yuki Araki, that Dodge Viper in Group 4 trim is no slouch at all, and he was two tenths of a second up, very close to Jose Serrano, especially around a lap as long as this. Here comes Araki to the line, across it he goes, and he goes top of the pile by just over two tenths of a second. So at the moment, it's Dodge on provisional pole. Yeah, two tenths over a lap, which is nearly seven minutes, is uh, insane. That's uh, a tiny amount of time, really, but uh, yeah, Araki so far, provisional pole, Baptiste Beauvoir in the SLS AMG, of course, a combination we've seen a lot of the, the past few years. Let's see if it pays dividends then. Coming across the line, it's not. It's going to be just over seven minutes. So P3 provisionally for Baptiste, though, but uh, a couple of seconds away from where he wants to be. Yeah, just under six tenths uh, a clear of Sugimori then going into the top of the order. Here is Takuma Miyazono as he comes down the dotting hill. We know that that Subaru WRX is not the quickest car in a straight line, and that's going to really be compromising him down that hugely long straight. He's eight tenths of a second drift, so he's made up some good time uh, throughout the rest of the lap in the corners. That Subaru does have good traction good initial turn in as well and Miyazono we know is a very competent driver of course being the reigning triple champion into the final corner comes Miyazono what is the time going to be though for the Subaru driver across the line he comes it's a 6.59 it puts him third quickest so he only lost a tenth of a second coming down that long dotting of her straight so that's pretty confident then for him. Let's hope that with the slipstream of the race he can push forwards. Yeah, I'm sure that will really help drag him along when it comes to the race itself. As Adam Depay managed to go long enough without picking up a penalty this time, so good job Adam. Comes across now uh, through the last corner in the Jaguar F-Type. Not looking like a very good time though. Uh, 7.02, 7.03 and he goes behind Stracker. He'll be very disappointed with that. Yeah, that uh, Jaguar F-Type seems to be in a really fine window of being able to switch it on. Here is Okamoto then, the front wheel drive. Volkswagen Scirocco, what is he going to be able to do as he flicks it left and then comes in towards the right-hander. Nice tight apex through there. It's not a lap time to write home about, though. It's going to be the slowest of the time so far as he comes to the line. 7.04, that is going to be so disheartening for him to have just put everything into that lap then to be so far away. Yeah, completely different driving style, of course, in that front-wheel drive car as well. Would have suffered a lot for the twisties. Here's Quinton Yohal. Uh, it's been uh, the talk of the town recently in the uh, in GT circles, but uh, not so much here. Only P5 there in the Peugeot. What about Riotta Kokobin then? He's not far away from his time, and he is just under four hundredths of a second up on Yuki Araki's best time. So that Mazda 6 is working uh, very nicely indeed. Through into the right-hander he goes, across the timing line here as he's about to come now. Riotta Kokobin then for Mazda. Can he put it on pole? Yes, he can. A 657.974, just under two tenths clear. But Igor Frog is ready to try and better that in the Toyota 86. Into the final corner comes Frog, and then the 2018 Nations Cup champion comes to the line in the Toyota, and he goes pole then, a 6.57, 8.59. The front row separated by just over a tenth of a second.